Durban has been devastated by last week's flooding and it will happen again if we don't rebuild to withstand extreme weather. Let's speak to someone who specializes in urban design and architecture with a view to the future. Sibu Sisu Sitole is a lecturer in architecture and urban planning design at the University of KwaZulu-Natal. Thank you so much for joining us this evening, Mr. Sitole. When you hear the phrase, as many of our politicians are saying, we've got to build back better. When you hear that in the context of the Durban floods um, and urban planning, what do you think of? Yes, uh, thank you, Sally. Uh, firstly, I'd just like to send my heartfelt condolences to everyone, to all the family members who might have lost loved ones uh, or might have had loved ones displaced within the recent floods. Yes, I think it's quite true, Sally. Uh, we really need to re start rebuilding better and looking at our urban infrastructure uh, with a different light. We need to start being creative in the manner which we plan, design, and allocate our our our, our, our infrastructure and building society. I think the biggest challenge we normally have um, is that we need to incorporate a holistic uh, view into the built form. You know, I think a big problem that usually we, we encounter, where and it's time and time and time again, is that. You find that um, different stakeholders or different government departments usually work in silos and without communicating with one another. So they don't create a form of synergy where, which would actually create a better response and a much richer response to our built form. So I think we need to start employing creative and modern forms of uh, building design and building technology in order for us to circumvent these form of catastrophes that we've seen recently. And of course, you know, climate change, global warm, warming is not just affecting us in South Africa. It's a global problem. So I would imagine there's a lot of innovative ideas to make buildings able to better withstand uh, flooding and also decisions about where you put buildings. So talk to me about some of those creative ideas that are coming through, some of the things that perhaps Durban should be considering. Mm, okay, I think there's a... Uh Global warming is, is, is a big problem, I think, globally. But I think in our case, it's, it's, we are in a unique uh, position because we can't just look at buildings in, the, in isolation. We also need to look at the social comp components of why people actually build in undesirable land. You know, mm. Uh, mm. The big issue uh, we have in Durban is that, or even most cities globally and in around South Africa, is that we have a lot of urban migration. And when people come to the city, they look, uh, they're in search of better job opportunities and uh, uh, to better and uh, better forms of, of, of living. So uh, the cheapest and the most available forms of land are usually the ones in undesirable uh, pieces of yeah. land where they could just set up informally and actually reside there because they're close to water. So I, mean, this I think is... we should actually... Uh, so, sorry, I was just going to jump in and say, I mean, a uh, case in point is the fact there's a significant poor population living in informal settlements in areas that flood regularly. They choose those areas because they're close to town, they're close to a water source, but of course they're very vulnerable to flooding. So how does urban design work with people like that who still want to stay close to work opportunities and school, but they can't afford to buy a big plot. They can't really afford to move away uh, from those dangerous areas. I think there's actually quite um, creative methods we can use. And I think the biggest challenge we have, especially in our city, is that we need to densify our cities um, uh, accordingly. You know, uh, We need to start building uh, single, I mean, uh, double, triple story walk-ups in order for us to, to, to move the people into to, to closer pieces of land, closer pieces where there's economic opportunities. And, um, and, and once we start identifying the area, it actually brings a lot uh, uh, into the area. So there's also various forms of technology which you can incorporate where you're building with alternative forms of technology uh, or building materials that actually are cost-effective and are actually durable and are able to withstand uh, these forms of weather conditions. So All I right. think we, we really need to uh, relook in how we actually yeah. approach this, this, whole, this whole problem in its totality and not just as a form of building, uh, of building material or as a form of design, but the social component as well uh, needs to be catered for in these kind of situations. 
And it's so tempting, I would imagine, to just to try and quickly build a structure to make sure that someone's out uh, of a, a hall where they might be staying. And, and we know that there are going to have to be these transit areas where people stay for a while while um, homes are built for them. Um, you mentioned innovative technology. I wonder if you can give me a couple of examples about what South African uh, builders should be looking at, um, cost-effective technology that can make homes better able to withstand climate change. I think there's actually uh, quite a number, you know, uh, if I were to, 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 to start now, I'd, well, I think we'd run out of time. But there's structurally insulated panels, there's prefabrication, which we should actually start being employing. And uh, the, the, those kind of the, uh, just a few uh, alternative building materials, which are easy to erect. You can erect uh, a structure within two days and it's last, long lasting and it's durable and it would be able to withstand uh, various forms of weather. Yeah. And there's a lot of companies around South Africa that actually produce these kind of building materials. But because uh, they're not commonly used, you know, we find that uh, it becomes expensive to build with them because there's a lack of expertise. But once you actually start employing these building materials, they, they, it becomes much easier to, to actually implement and build with. So I think these are just a few uh, in, in the kind of interventions that mm. we should start to be looking at in terms of building technology. Yeah, so what I'm hearing from you is that the technology is out there. We need to start having the conversations, uh, break down the silos so that everyone is discussing the same objective, which is not just throw up a new structure, but build back to be more resilient. Uh, and it is a perfect time to have those conversations. Otherwise, we're going to be talking in a few years' time again about devastating and deadly floods in Durban and other areas. So thank you so much for chatting to us this evening. Sibu Sisu Sitole is a lecturer in architecture and urban planning design at the University of KwaZulu.